<laughs> there was another cut. I'm just curious. Just curiosity in 20 minutes, yeah. Um. But I mean. Continuing on, like. I know I'm going on a lot about more like, and more and stuff, but I mean, it's just, I'm on that topic, you know? <clears throat> I've been waiting for a while. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I mean. Like, it just. I, I like to do some of the stuff, because I mean, I think about it this way, World War 1 and 2 were really the only wars that were fought for a purpose that wasn't just made up, you know? Vietnam War, um, Australia was with America, and we were fighting for a theory that didn't exist. We thought communism would sweep across the entire, like, for us, we thought it would sweep across the Pacific and get to Australia. That was our innovation because we thought we'd be next dominant theory. As for America, my that story might just be different or might be the same. But uh, ever since day one, it was always a fight between our divided beliefs, fascism, communism, and imperialism. Uh, if, it's, if it's called imperialism, it's not, sorry. But anyway, I mean, that's what it was. I mean, it was a constant fight between those two. Fascism was eliminated, and I'm glad it was, because fascism was very twisted. Like, the idea of superior and inferior races. Uh, like, that's one that shouldn't exist. Communism and. I get is it capitalism. I think it's capitalism, not imperialism. Um, capitalism. I'm gonna just call, call it capitalism. Capitalism and communism, they both have their good views, you know? Like, communists, I like. Communism, I like the idea of equality, you know? Like, there shouldn't. In my opinion, I. I can't stand rich, arrogant pricks because it drives me insane hearing these people talk about low class people and all that stuff and inferior people when like the only thing separating them is money you know that's it there's nothing besides oh oh, oh an attitude of course it just annoys me beyond the belief when people are like that but, but then on the other side, I mean, like, so I mean, you know, working class, so like, I reckon having, like, everyone gets kind of equality, it sounds good, but then when you think about, like, we kind of do, I can see why it's a bad thing too, because we need, we need, like, our... Like, the pri if private, if everything was owned by the government or one man or anything like that, like, because communism, if it's, if it's a quality, then you can't really have a leader. But uh, there's more of a scale to that thing. I think that there's only like one leader, there's no real government. I mean, it's a dictation. And I'm, I don't know how I feel about dictation. I think that if it's a good, there's no such thing as a good dictator, I guess, because it's the word. But, if you had a good leader, and it was just one man, like almost like a king, I guess. You know, like a king of tyrant. In this case, it would be like a leader and a dictator. If you had a good leader, I reckon that having one person lead is good because you get a lot more done because he's the one making the decisions. If he makes the right ones, then that's good. And on the other side, you have like the problem with like. If one person leaves and he's bad, then everything, everything goes to hell. Because you end up with this person who gets to make everything up himself to suit his own needs and how he sees it in his twisted view. Which is a problem. But, you know, and then completely opposite to this, you have um, government and, you know, like more than one leader. Governments are good because it allows decisions to be thought about and all that stuff, you know? 
but a thing against governments that I have to say, especially here, sometimes they just don't get things done. Like things take forever, you know, you call it democracy and things like that, but sometimes things just don't get done. And it takes forever and a half for a decision to be made. Even though it's the right one, there's always someone in disagreement. That's the problem. That's the thing, like, dictatorships, you'll find, even if it's positive or negative, they get things done. The only negative is that they can get negative things done, you know? The positives about government is 100%. The fact that one person's not making all the decisions, so as a result, there's more of a broader, like, opinion on things. Things are covered better, you know? If they're good at teamwork and stuff. But they also don't sometimes get things done. So I can see the difference between the two views. Also the fact that I reckon it's unfair, like, um, my teacher said this, you know, quoting kind of. Do you really think it's fair when it comes to communism that you'll be working super duper hard in a company, for example, making cars. You'll be working super, super hard at your job, you know, sweat and all, to try and get your job done. But do you get the same pay as your friend over here have, you know, having a smoke or something, sitting back, don't give a crap. Do you think it's fair that they get the same pay, you know? Like, when there's no pay rise to that person for working hard. That's, you know, the problem that many people had with communism was the fact that, well, certain corrupt people didn't really want, um, they didn't want their government, like, they didn't want things to be owned by the government or by the people only. They wanted, you know, because then it's unfair, you know? Because they want to actually make their own profit, but, you know, whatever. You can see, you can see, you can see both sides, like the advantages and disadvantages. And that's my problem. They have their own system, they have their own way. And we decided in Vietnam and the Korean War, well, not really the Korean War, more of the Vietnam, we decided that it was kind, well, no, no, it was against communism too, so both, but we decided to go completely against communism, why? Because it's a different belief from us and we've got to purge it fire. How? I know our mo- I know our morals and stuff are better than that of, say, you know, the Nazis and them wanting to commit genocide, but what were we doing? What were we planning to achieve with superior force wiping out every single commie that we came across? That's my problem. Like, we had a very twisted view on our idea of saving ourselves and stuff from communism. Our four defense policies, you know? Our four defense policy was we attack, you know, the best defense is a good offense, and we charged in there, guns blazing, killed every commie in our way. Used extreme methods. Sorry, Australians, we had better methods than so America, sorry. Just had to say. They were kind of playing it retro, going full. You know, superior force, World War One and Two tactics, and meanwhile, Australia. We thought about it, and we said, no, that's not a good idea because you see, they are using a tactic that is superior to brute force, one that can never really be beat. You can't just expect to guns blazing go in, absolutely annihilate everyone, and you're gonna win. You know. You can't expect to do that, like, from rush the enemy, every single time. It's not gonna work. Especially an enemy that hides, you know? You can call them cowards, but in war there's no, like, you know, like, there's never really rules, obviously, or anything like that. So there's, 
can't just call someone coward because they have superior tactics. Because they were superior tactics, they were a tactic. It wasn't cowardice, it was a legitimate tactic. Vietcong had a legitimate tactic. So yeah, the VC. Then you think about, like, just the fact that I reckon we we discussed it actually today in history. If if the Americans used our tactics, took them on, and stopped using their own, we might have had a chance to win. Some people aren't going to won. But honestly, no, we couldn't have won either way because. We, it happened in the um, Korean War. We would just pretty much we end up pushing Vietnam like, back eventually, maybe if the you know, numbers and stuff. They had heaps more. They had numbered us. <coughs> Everything like that. They knew the land. We didn't. You know? um, but if they. If they did those tactics, we could have pushed them back to the edge. But the problem is then China would get involved. And China got involved in Korea, I think. I think they did, and that's why we lost. Because they came across with their superior numbers and we were outnumbered ten to one, so it became from us winning every day to fleeing every day, trying to run from this new superior enemy. Because that's what happened. That's what it was like against them, like, because they just outnumbered us so much, and it was so bad. That's why we came to, that's why we created the treaty and split the land, because, you know. <coughs> so honestly, no, we probably would've, wouldn't have won, even if America, America, well, America, the US decided to use those tactics. It was great and all of them to try using those tactics. I don't have anything like. I don't really have anything against America. Huh. No. I don't have anything against America at all. You can't judge a book by its cover, you can't judge people, people by its leaders and their choices, you know? were misled to believe things and that's exactly what happened with Australia. We were told we were, we were fed lies with the propaganda about what was going on. It was wrong and wow. Yeah. It was bad. <coughs> I don't think of what else to say, honestly. Yeah, I mean, like, that's, we just, we, we, we lost the, both those wars, and well, ever since World War II, every war that we've fought in has either been pretty much for what? Like I said, Vietnam was for a point in theory that never happened, was just, you know, it wasn't even proved them to be right, we were just paranoid, fearful of what we didn't know, you know? And then... The other side of the Korean War, I don't know what we really fought that for. I think it was because one side was planning to become communist. We still thinking against communists, but unless we went full like Nazi and tried to commit mass genocide, there's no way. We could but even genocide, like you wipe out, you try to wipe out everyone. There's always going to be something left, a remnant, a rebellion, something. Who's seen Star Wars? Pretty much everyone. Look at that. Empire. They wiped out, you know, tried to wipe out all the Jedi. Spark still remained, obviously. Oh yeah, who the hell is hyped for Star Wars 7? 
Seriously. Holy crap. Who saw the trailer, by the way? The new trailer? Oh my gosh, I saw that trailer about 10 times. <laughs> Can't wait for that one. I think that trailer eliminated a few people's doubts about it being, you know, crap. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully it's good.